So, good afternoon and uh, great to be with you. And thank you for arranging a real uh, UK weather for me. Um, uh, the topic I was uh, given is seven things uh, uh, that you never knew about Palestine and the Palestinians. So, seven things. Uh, the first thing is that uh, many people don't know that there are Christians in Palestine. Uh, often when they hear that uh, there are Christians, uh, the first question they ask us is, uh, tell us when did you convert to Christianity? Uh, assuming that maybe we used to be heathens who were converted to Christianity by some British missionaries or something. Uh, 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 and I always like to tell them, uh, remember, uh, Christianity uh, did not start in Canterbury. <laughs> Sometimes you might have that feeling, but it started in Palestine. And so the normal place to have Christians is Palestine. And the second thing is that uh, the Palestinian Christian community uh, are not a recent community. They have been there for the last 2,000 years. Uh, in fact, most probably we are the descendant of the first Christian community who believed in Jesus as their Messiah. So I was born across the street from where Jesus was born. I mean, literally across the street. And so I always like to think that most probably, most probably one of my grand, 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 grand mas used to babysit for Jesus. <laughs> so the Palestinian Christian community is really an old community, and it survived all different political structures and uh, difficult uh, political uh, uh, upheavals, and they continue uh, to be there in Palestine. The third thing maybe you never knew about is that although Christians in Palestine make less than 2% of the population. They play a much bigger role than their percentage. Uh, in a study we did recently, we found out that Christians in Palestine run one-third of the health services in the West Bank. Imagine, 2% run one-third of the health services. Also, what we found out in that study is that 54%, uh, no, 45%, 45% of all non-governmental organizations, these are human rights organizations, social institutions, etc., are run by Christians or uh, funded by churches. Imagine, 2%, they run 45% of non-governmental organizations. I'm sure you never knew about that. Uh, maybe also you never knew that uh, in Palestine, uh, since we are having a Palestinian government since 95, in average, we had two Christian ministers in the Palestinian cabinet out of 20. So that's like 10%. Uh, right now, we have two ministers in the cabinet. Uh, our finance minister is a Christian, and our uh, tourism minister is a Christian. Two very important, actually, positions. And actually, there are many of the Palestinian ambassadors abroad are Christians. Our UK ambassador here is a Christian. He is a Palestinian-Armenian Christian. Our ambassador in, uh, in Germany is a Christian. Our ambassador in Romania is a Christian. Our ambassador in Italy is a Christian. So actually, Christians play a much bigger role than our percentage. On the other side, since the establishment of the State of Israel in 1948, there haven't been one single Christian minister in any Israeli government. Think of that in terms of the image and the perception of people uh, about Palestine. The fourth thing maybe you uh, never knew about Palestine is that uh, uh, Palestine is a tourist destination. 
In the West Bank, we have over 3,000 archaeological sites. Uh, they go back to 3,000 years or 2,000 years or uh, Middle Ages. So 3,000 archaeological sites in Palestine and uh, actually 2 million tourists come, came last year to Palestine. The majority of them are Christian pilgrims. Uh, but unfortunately, most of the Christian pilgrims, they come to Palestine to run where Jesus walked. And what we are uh, hoping for is for them to come beside all the archaeological sites, besides all the shrines, to meet the living stones, not only the ancient stones. These are the Christians uh, in the country. Uh, the, uh, the, the next point is that Unfortunately, Palestine has been occupied for most of the time. Uh, remember, uh, the first people to occupy Palestine were the Assyrians, 722. Then we had the Babylonians, 587. Then the Persian came, 538. All of this is BC, okay? Then the, uh, the Greeks then the Romans, then the Byzantines, then the Arabs, then the Crusaders, then few others, then the uh, Ottomans, then the British, and then Israel. So actually Israel, according to the international law, is an occupying force, and this is why we have to put them in this chain of empires, occupiers, they were occupying Palestine. Unfortunately, many people uh, abroad, they, they, they connect Israel with the biblical Israel, the state of Israel of today with the biblical Israel, instead of connecting Israel actually with all of these occupations that occupied our land. Maybe you never put this uh, uh, together uh, this way. Uh, you are hearing a lot about Gaza these days, and uh, I'm not sure if you knew that Gaza is only 360 kilometer, square kilometers uh, uh, altogether. It's the most uh, densely populated area with around 2 million people. Um, and in the, in the war just uh, last, uh, uh, in the last five weeks, we had uh, over 2,100 uh, Palestinians killed, mostly civilians. Uh, over 10,000 homes destroyed. In that sense, the Gaza war this year is our 9-11 experience in terms of destruction. And yet what many people don't know about Gaza is that Gaza used to be the main mission hub in the 4th, 5th, and 6th century, Christianity actually uh, was brought into South Palestine, into the Sinai Peninsula, into East Jordan by missionaries from Gaza. So that rich history of Gaza, unfortunately, it's not very well known. That's my uh, sixth point. My seventh point, I will end with that, is that uh, many people abroad think, I mean, that they are bystanders. They are watching the Middle East, people there killing each other, and they think they are uh, actually bystanders. But fact is, the international community is part of the problem in the Middle East, not part of the solution. Why? Because the international community keeps actually subsidizing the occupation. The occupation cannot continue if the Israeli will pay for it from their own pocket. But unfortunately, the Israeli have rich uncles in many parts of the world, and they keep subsidizing 
the occupation. So Israel is getting all the hardware for free. That is the F-16, the, you know, uh, uh, the shells, the Iron Dome, all of these toys for free. And this is why it can continue the occupation. But also what many people don't realize is that often some churches give Israel the software for this hardware to be activated. And what I mean with software is that for many people in the pew, subconsciously or sometimes consciously, they connect the Israel of the Bible with the Israel of today. And this is why they think it's a divine intervention, this occupation, and this is why they don't think it's a human rights violation what's happening there. This is why actually uh, the Christians of Palestine are asking the world to help us put an end to the Israeli occupation so that actually both Israeli and Palestinians can live in peace. Uh, as I said this morning in my talk, so that the lamb, which is a code for the people of Palestine, and the lion, it's a code for the empire, can live side by side on one condition that the lion become vegetarian. Otherwise, they cannot live by side by side, which means that the empire learns not to do harm to the others and that they will not put their trust in military uh, uh, means uh, only, uh, but invest in peace. So those are seven points. Uh, maybe you never knew about Palestine. Hopefully they will help you see Palestine in a new light. Uh, thank you.